we were wrong because once we removed it and replaced it with a simple plastic membrane, the old programming never reasserted, reasserted itself again. It was gone for good. And the first thing that they, um, Martha and Jim did when they succeeded in reprogramming her was to rename her Kendra Drag, Dragonwertha after the daughter they had lost in the war. And for them, it became their daughter. And they loved her as their own as she worked through her therapy and relearned how to walk and talk. As Martha fine-tuned her pro new programming, Kendra's new programming, Kendra became their joy. They loved it. And they believed that it was that love for their daughter that was the secret ingredient why Kendra never reverted to her old programming. Even they never suspected that their replacing the plastic glass had been the reason for their success. But now, 50 years later, Martha understood that it had been the plastic glass membrane with its, with its then unknown computing capabilities that was the cause for all of the earlier failed tries at reprogramming the alien dreadnoughts. And the replacing of that plastic glass with a replacement plastic membrane was the reason for all of the successes at reprogramming since then. She'd always believed that it was their love for their daughter and her love for them that had achieved the first success at programming these dreadnoughts. This is why after the war ended, when they received the order that all captured dreadnoughts were to be either sent to a reclamation center where all dreadnoughts were to be housed, or if damaged, too damaged beyond repair, they were to be melted down and the metal sent to a foundry. They were not about to melt down Kendra, their daughter. No, they couldn't do it, so they faked it, running the furnace all day, and then they purchased melted metal that would equal Kendra's weight and then sent it to the foundry, recording the metal transfer to the foundry. Uh, then they ordered Kendra, the captured dreadnought, to stand in a storage pantry area of their basement and power down. Then they closed off the pantry area, hiding Kendra behind a wall. Then they dropped all government contracts and uh, went dark. And uh, now that the war was over, they devoted themselves to developing the first ever photonic language ever invented to be used by an equally theoretical computer that Jim was developing called an infinity crystal, carbon-based cybernet, uh, that was carbon-based and would think at the speed of light. These were two theoretical projects that would take generations to accomplish, and only the scientist who added the last, very final piece to it um, is the one who would actually get all of the fame or credit that would come from it. But they didn't care about any of that because it accomplished what they needed it to do. It made them irrelevant to the war uh, effort. Giving up all their contracts made them irrelevant to the war effort. So the military soon lost interest in them and had no interest in their new project since they were no longer going after anything, any new military contracts or advisory positions. The military moved on and they were soon forgotten. Without lucrative military contracts, they had to let go of their teams of scientists and their labs around the world and even sell the building that housed their main lab um, here in Chicago. But that didn't matter to them. They knew they would always be comfortable, and for them, family came first. The only thing was... The, the only thing... Was the, the, the only thing that mattered was protecting Kendra, their daughter. That was their overriding mission. Um, after a year or so, they reintroduced Kendra to the world. She they, they reopened the pantry she was standing in, uh, the closed-off pantry, and uh, sh they had her power back up. <clears throat> um um, at least, you know, now she had her their home, their lab, and their back garden to uh, to occupy her time. Zaibu was the first to meet Kendra, now introduced uh, as Martha's granddaughter, 
as he walked out of the lab one day. Then Zaya met her also, and they both thought that uh, Kendra was a pleasant enough young woman, and clearly not a scientist. She just didn't seem tech-savvy or threatening in any way, so she was so she would not interfere with their mission to learn everything they could about Martha's new photonic language for computers that did not yet exist and Jim's theoretical and revolutionary carbon-based computer, the Infinity Crystal, that would think at the speed of light. Um, in reality, Kendra's job was to monitor and defend her parents, now just Martha, as well as their, as well as her computer, computers, experiments, house, and lab. So Kendra's subroutines protected Martha's computers and labs, and constantly monitored everything. And when she detected a hack, she confronted Zaya in the lab and started questioning her. When she was attacked by Zebu, and then Zaya joined in on the attack, Kendra fought back and dealt with them easily. They were both human defense robots. She disabled both of them, and in the morning she showed them to Martha, who accessed Zaibu's programming and studied his memory. By God, she said to Kendra, This is insurrection. The human defense robots, they're, they're planning on taking over, and, human, and humanity was about to be overthrown by the human Ds, and, the, the, and man would never see it coming. We have to do something, Martha said to Kendra. So Martha replaced Zaibu's plastic glass memory with the new glass plastic glass membrane she was working on, and then overrode Zaibu's cyber brain, uh, w and then with photonic, uh, f she wiped Zaibu's cyber brain and then with photonic mind mapping device um, using a copy of her late husband's brain mind that she had saved but had never intended to use um, she she uh, she reprogrammed Zaibu and it worked although Zaibu seemed like her gym he also seemed a little mechanical and rudimentary uh, Martha believed that that with physical therapy and a whole lot of love, she and Kendra would be able to bring Jim back to his old self. She knew it. Good is new. Just like Kendra had flowered with love, she believed Jim eventually would flower with love. This human deed was once again fighting for humanity. Infiltrate the cyber revolt and destroy it from within, she commanded Zaibo. Um, so then Martha sent him to the biggest broadcast tower in the state and ordered him to broadcast the human D's plans to overthrow humanity out into the world and then to go underground in order to infiltrate and destroy the cyber threat from within. So he did it. And the entire world um, saw the human D's dreadnought conspiracy uh, playing out on their monitors and TVs uh, um, the world was warned, and humanity began to fight back. Martha had also reprogrammed Zia with the with the uh, new plastic glass membrane, and uh, um, after wiping her her cyber brain, sh she reprogrammed Zia with the photonic mind mapping device, using a copy of her own mind, Martha's own mind that she had made at the same time um, that she had made Jim's, that, that you know, her husband's uh, brain had been mapped. And then Martha had sent Zia directly to the UN to infiltrate the UN's world government in order to identify and expose cyber infiltration at the highest level of government. And then Martha and Kendra, you have the date, then Martha said to Kendra, <coughs> You have the data and the plans within you to rebuild the Infinity Crystal and Jim's work and, 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 and bring Jim and finish Jim's work as well as to finish the photonic cyber language that I have worked on 
uh, for the past 50 years that I believe will be critical in getting the Infinity Crystal to work properly and to interface with all of the alien technology um, from the crashed ships and captured ships. Uh, then Martha said to Kendra, the reason I brought these two graduate students, uh, Zebu and, and Zia, into my lab, Kendra, and now in, into our home, was because I was hoping that they would help you to navigate the world once I'm gone. 